that we're continuing with this mimer that the Lubavitch Rebbe said. Usually we learn Lukuti Torah, Torah or, but we, the um, the Torah, the Lukuti Torah for this week in, in Parsha Shemini is, is fairly short. And we did it last year. We did it last year. So I'm going to try to <coughs> figure out a way to just bring up the um, second part. We already learned the first part. Bring up the second part. But until then, let's um, let's continue with this mimer. Beautiful mimer, and it's talking about uh, the idea of of Passover. What exactly happened in Passover? The Jews getting out of Egypt, and even more important, what it means to us today. What it means to us today, namely that we we are awaiting the future redemption. And believe it or not, this whole world is going to change drastically uh, by means of the Mashiach. How is it going to change? That we'll see the truth. There won't be any more lies and, and negative things in the world, nothing in the world. And the world can get along very well without these things, without murder and thievery and, and, uh, and, 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 and rape and licentiousness. And things. And the world will just be a very wonderful place. And that's only just the beginning. That's just the outside. That there'll be, we'll see, we'll feel godliness. This world will be greater, higher than the world to come. You know, there's look, there's all these religions. There's billions of people, billions of people, that their whole life is uh, devoted to doing everything they can to go into heaven, or at least according to their books. You know, to do what you can do, the, go into heaven, because heaven is really a very pleasurable, amazing goal and people realize that this world is not uh, where it's at well they're wrong the fact is this world is where it's at <clears throat> because this in this world is concealed is concealed right now from us um not just the, the pleasures of the world to come but the infinite blessings of the creator of the world to come it was the revelation of the creator himself in this world which that's it's beyond pleasure. It's it's some some sort of a thing. I mean, we don't know what it is. We, we don't know what the world to come is either. We don't know what it means to go to heaven. We have no idea what it means heaven. The pleasures of heaven. <clears throat> but the, let us just suffice to say the pleasures of going to heaven. It says the pleasures of going to heaven are take all the pleasures of this world, all the pleasures with all the drugs and all the success and all the this and this, all the pleasures of this world and multiply it by 70, let's just say, that's what it says. And that's like the pleasure of one second in the world to come, going to heaven. And that's only a ray of godliness. <clears throat> and the future is going to be even greater. How is this going to be? It's going to, how is it going to be? Because pure God will be revealed. God will be revealed in this world. Now he's concealed, he'll be revealed. Okay, how is all this going to happen? By means of our work. Oh, really? By means of our work? Or maybe not. It's a free gift by God. So that's the argument that we're having over here. What's going to be the future redemption? Is the future redemption going to be by means of our work? Or is it just going to be a free gift of God? Or is it going to be a combination of both? And if so, how can you combine these two things? What God gives is infinite. And what we give is very finite. So how can it be... <clears throat> There's also a saying that says, the Rambam, the Maimonides, says that for sure, all of the Jewish people are going to return to God, and immediately there will be the future redemption. So how can it be for sure? I mean, to return to God, this is a very deep personal decision that a person has to make on his own. How can it be for sure? You can't force a person to return to the Creator. If you're forcing him, it means that you know as soon as the force goes away, then he'll just revert to him, his, his, his own self. So what's going on? How can he be forced to return genuinely to God, to genuinely love God? It's like forcing a person to love to eat peanut butter. He doesn't like it. He can, he can pretend to eat it. He can go to acting school and he can pretend it, but he just doesn't like it. That's all there is to it. Same thing with God. How can you force him? <clears throat> and how can you say for sure? And how can it be that if they do that immediately, they'll all be redeemed? What does it mean immediately? Okay, so we're going to Let's put this into, into, into more sort of understandable terms, even though the whole topic is not an understandable topic. 
<clears throat> okay, first of all, Judaism, we said that we talked about this yesterday. Judaism is based on this big miracle that the, the birth of the Jewish people was this amazing miracle that there's nothing even comparable to it in science fiction. How much, in, in, how much more so in reality <clears throat> that God actually took all the Jews, the whole, entire nation, like 3 million people. Back then it says that it was only one fifth of all the people. The, the four fifths stayed back. This is Hamushim Yatsum Yatsum in any case, God took them personally, took them out of this country called Egypt. They were all abject slaves. They had no dream even of getting out. Nobody even knew it was possible. They just knew that someone's going to come along in the future and get them out of there. So they they knew, I mean, they would they'd have, they knew what bad was. They have no idea what good is. They knew what bad was. And, and even more, bad was being accepted them as good. They were slaves and it was okay, you know, just as long as they, they weren't beaten and that they could wake up the next morning. That was enough for them. They, weren't, they didn't have any dreams and longing to get out. But they knew someday something was going to happen. And when Moses came, it was sort of against their will. That's why only one-fifth got out of Egypt. But nevertheless, they did get out. They got out and they received the Torah. And it was amazing miracles from God. A whole entire nation, like three million people, they all got out. There's no way you can explain this according <clears throat> to science or whatever that it was made up. I mean, even though people do explain it. <clears throat> what you can do is not get excited about it. You can not get excited about it. Big deal. So God took him out of Egypt. God, didn't, God can do anything. What's so good to get excited about? But to, to, to deny it totally that it ever happened, I mean, it, obviously, there are a lot of people that do deny it, and there's big scientists or whatever historians, but nevertheless, it happened, okay? It happened, you can believe it or not, but the fact is it happened. So God took the Jews out of Egypt. This is an amazing miracle. They weren't expecting it. They had no idea. They got, we got to the Mount Sinai. God himself gave them the Torah. They didn't deserve it. They did nothing to deserve it. They weren't expecting it. They weren't prepared for it. And they got the Torah, and, okay? That happened in the month of Nisan. Nisan, God did everything. The month of miracles. <clears throat> but then there's another month in Judaism, and that's the month which is called Tishrei. Tishrei is the month when man was created. That's you, we Jews celebrate Rosh Hashanah, first day of the year when man was. That's the date when man was created. Date when man was created, and that we say is Tishrei. There's two different opinions about this, but nevertheless, you say that's Tishrei. We're going to see. Tishrei, that's when man was created. The whole thing of man is to serve God from below to above, not like Tish, not like Nisan. Nisan is big miracles from above to below. <clears throat> okay, so that's the difference between Tishrei and Nisan in several ways. We did this yesterday, so we're going to just do quickly again. Tishrei is the whole thing of Tishrei, is serving God from below. And that's when man was created. The, Nisan is God revealing himself from above. Miracles. Okay, now this whole business we're talking about, this, this requires a lot of faith. I mean, you have to have faith that God really did create man, and faith that God did take the Jews out of Egypt, but nevertheless, that's the whole thing of Judaism. The whole, uh, the whole point of Judaism is faith. Is faith that people have what we want to call it an awareness of something that cannot be comprehended by intelligence. God, the Creator, God is creating us. We can't feel this. We can't understand this. There's no. It's not scientifically, mathematically. We can prove it. God is creating, but nevertheless, that's faith, that's belief. But it's believing in something that's really true. And when you start to feel the truth of this, then you can have love and etc. And that's called going out of Egypt. That's called going out of Egypt. You go out of yourself a little bit. Okay, that's the month of Nisan that it comes from above. <clears throat> it comes from above, an arousal from above. That's the same thing as in our prayers. In our prayers in Nisan, we start to pray. It's called Verdu. 
D-E-W. And on Tishrei, we pray, Shemina says, we pray for rain. Rain is something that depends on man from below, praying. That's what it says. Rain. Okay, so what the Rebbe is going a little bit deeper. There's, a, there's two different opinions. When was the world created? When was the world created? <clears throat> everyone agrees that the world, of Judaism, everyone agrees the world was created. But it's not exactly clear from the Torah what month it was. Rabbi Yoshua says that the world was created in Nisan, which that's not the accepted opinion. Rabbi Yeshua says that the world was created in Nisan. In other words, man was created on the first day of Nisan. That's what he says. And Rabbi Eliezer says the world was created in Tishri, which that's the opinion that we have. Okay, what type of an argument is this? Says the Rebbe, the fact is that they're, they're both true. Rebbe Yeshua is talking about potential, the thought of God. It aroused the thought of God, so to speak, and to create the world was in Nisan. And the actual creation happened in Tishrei. The thought, God's thought, the plan, God had to create the world. So potentially the world was created in Nisan. So the Rebbe asked the question, what type of a thing is that? What do you mean? The plan of the world is pure miracles. That's the plan. But actually, it, it wasn't. How can the, if the main thing of the world is our work from below, then how can it be that the plan that God made was in the month of miracles? Also, what does it mean? So obviously, this what it says in Nisan, it means before time. Time actually began on <clears throat> Tishrei. When man was created, that's when time, that's when the world was actually created, according to Judaism, 5,782 years ago. A little, um, that's when the world was actually created, but the plan for the world, would, or so to speak, got, rose up in God's thought, or even more, we can say the reason for creating the world, the goal for the world is Nisa, miracles. So there's going to be, we can wait for big miracles. On the other hand, we have to do everything on our own. How does this work in together? Hine, hapluk to the, the, this argument we just said between Rabbi Eliezer, that the world was created on Tishrei, and Rabbi Yeshua, that the world was created <clears throat> and in Nisan. Excuse me one moment. Excuse me, just one moment, please. I'm sorry. Huh. Excuse me, please. I just want, I'm just thinking of something. I just, one moment, please. All right. Okay, the Rabbi Eliezer, that the world was created in Tishrei, and Rabbi Yeshua, that the world was created in Nisan, who is also relevant to the time of the future redemption. There's also an argument. <clears throat> this is, says in the, in, the, in the Talmud, Rabbi Eliezer, he holds that the future redemption is going to be in Nisan. <clears throat> in Nisan, that's when Passover was. <clears throat> in Nisan, we were redeemed. But in Tishrei, is going to be the future redemption. What does he care? We'll see. Now, there can be no more, no more important date than the day that's going to be the future redemption. Because then the whole world is going to be genuine reality, real, real world. Like we said, there won't be any bad things. They'll just be good things. I mean, the way it is now, we don't even know what good things are. We don't really know what good is. The world is so terribly confused. But let's say, I mean, there's really, there's nothing that's really agreed about what life, what good is. But ideally, the, the greatest good there can be is life. Life is the, is, the, is the best thing to be alive, human beings' life. Right? Nowadays, they, they, they don't want life. The, the, the abortions are, 
are encouraged and, and uh, homosexuality is encouraged and right and birth control is encouraged not good to have they want to have population control the less people the better and oh, the world is very sick the world is very become a very very sick place but according to these people they say that's that's what health is health is that you know you do what you want abortions what could be better than abortion I'm talking about, right free you do what you want and nevertheless, the fact is, is that we don't know really what real good is. And even when there is life, you don't, what is the meaning? Is there meaning? Why is the world here? What's the point of it? <clears throat> so it says, in the future, there's going to be the redemption. The redemption is that there's going to be real, true meaning and blessing in, every, in life. That's the most important date there's going to be. <clears throat> the reason why the world was created. It says. Rabbi Eliezer, Rabbi Eliezer says that true, we did leave Egypt in the month of Nisan. There were these big miracles. God himself, the creator, revealed himself. But the future redemption is not going to be in Nisan. The future redemption is going to be in Tishrei, which the law is not like that. Rabbi Yoshua, he says that in Nisan, we were redeemed. God took us out of Egypt. And in Nisan, there will be the future redemption. Now, this, of course, is is this future redemption thing is from the beginning only for the Jews. This whole business is Judaism. But the creator is not just for the Jews. The creator is creating everybody. And when the Jews improve the world, so they're improving the world for all, the entire world, the entire mankind. So this is really very important to all mankind. There'll be an end to war, an end to famine, an end to <clears throat> confusion. So in the future, the winner, winner is going to be the future redemption, says Rabbi Yoshua, and that's the way the law is, that back then we were taken out of Egypt in Nisan, that everybody agrees, but in the future redemption is also going to be in the month of Nisan. What does this mean? What do we care what date it is? Why is it so important? Moverat Samachzer, the third Rabbi of Chabad, is explaining the Azal Shitasa that they're going according to their policy. Each one has their policy, but open the Geula. When, not just when the redemption is going to be, but how it's going to be the Rabbi Eliezer, the Rabbi Eliezer, that he says the future redemption is going to be in Tishrei Svirlo. He says, "Im Yisraelo sin tshuva." If the Jewish people do repentance, Tishrei is the month that we have to work. If the Jewish people they repent, if they return to their true Jewish identity, Nigalim, then there will be the future redemption. Im lav, and if not, in Nigalim, then there will not be a future redemption. Says Rabbi Elazar, if the Jewish people keep wandering around in the darkness, then that's it. There won't be a future redemption. It's waiting for us, but you know, can't find the bank. Right? It's waiting for you, trillion dollars in the bank. I can't find the bank. Lochem, therefore, this redemption is waiting for us. But if you don't return to your true identity or you get to the bank, you don't have your identity card, right? You, you prove it's you. And so says Rabbi Eliezer, look, and therefore Sverle, he says that in Tishrei, there's going to be the future redemption. Why? Because the whole thing of Tishrei is doing tshuva, returning to God. He as tshuva, then is the, that's the month of tshuva, repentance. That's the month when tshuva, returning to God, is accepted more by God. The Zesh, Agula, the Yitzhak Mitzrayim, the fact that the Jewish people got out of Egypt, Hayatal was in the month of Nisan, <clears throat> and the future redemption is going to be in Tishrei. Why, how does Rabbi Eliezer explain this? Because they're different, says Rabbi Eliezer. Rabbi Eliezer, the point is not so much when it happens, because the main thing is that it happens. We get out of this terrible <clears throat> situation the world is in. What is it making the difference when it happens? It says, no, the, I'm trying to ta tell you about how it's going to happen. The Geula Dietzitz Mitzrayim that says Rabbi Eliezer. <clears throat> the reason that we went out of, the Jews went out of Egypt was because God took us out. The Jewish people were not ready at all. God did the whole thing. Lochen, therefore, Hayotabe Nisan, therefore, it was in the month of Nisan. Nisan indicates the month of miracles. The Gula Tida, but the future redemption says Rabbi Eliezer, Tia will be Al Yedechuva. 
will be by means of repentance. Repentance, return to God, correcting ourselves. We have to do the work. Avodah Yisrael, the service of the Jewish people. Look, and therefore, it's going to be in the month of Tishrei. This is also the reason why I'm going out of Egypt and also <clears throat> all of the redemptions that came afterwards right when we got out of Babylon and etc. That all of the <clears throat> exiles that we were, we got out of Egypt. It says after we got out of Egypt, then there was the first temple was destroyed. Then in the middle of the second, then they came back from there from Babylon. Then they, the second temple was the time of the Greeks ruled over the world, the whole miracle of Hanukkah. We got out of that. <clears throat> now we're in this terrible exile. It's called the exile of Edom. Interesting, called the exile of Rome. <clears throat> the exile that we're in. Nevertheless, after each one of these redemptions that God took us out, <clears throat> There was afterwards the Jews were put into exile again. Why? Because we were like Nekeba. We were like the feminine aspect. We just received. We didn't participate. We weren't partners with God in these redemptions, going out of Egypt, going out of Babylon. God just decided the time had come, and that's it, and the Jews got out. Okay, now I have to change pages over here one minute. One minute. No, I have to. Yeah. Here we go. Oh. One minute. Oh. Oh, there we go. Amazing. It worked. Okay. Now we. Second is a little bit just bigger. Here we go. Mm -hmm. I know. Oh, good, 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 good. Okay, back to here. Oh, to there. Mm -hmm. There we go. Good. <clears throat> but the future redemption is going to be eternal. Why was it that all these redemptions and miracles that happened to the Jews, why were they only temporary? Why are we in exile now? Because God had to do everything. Up to now, God did the whole business himself. The future redemption is going to be eternal. She'en acharei galus, there's not after it any exile. And that's what's called Masculine. The Jewish people will be like masculine. We won't be receivers. We'll be the ones that will be giving. Like it says, Ish Mazriya Tahila Yolda Zakhar. It says that if the man gives seed first, then gives birth to a nekeva, a feminine. If God does all the work, he's the Ish, and the Jewish people, they're the feminine. So then what's given birth? Feminine, weak, dependent on inspiration, constantly dependent on inspiration. That's the feminine aspect, like Mother Earth has to receive. But but if the Isha, in this case, the Jewish people, if they give seed first, then it gives birth to a male, the child that comes out. In other words, the resultant love and fear that the Jewish people give birth to is powerful, strong. That's what Rabbi Eliezer says. The future redemption is going to come because of our work. Because it's going to come of our work, we'll be ready for it. And because we'll be ready for it, we're not going to lapse back into our own natural egotistical patterns like they did, for instance, when they left Egypt, right, with all these miracles. And as soon as Moses wasn't there to keep them crazy all the time, so they worshiped the golden calf. That's what Rabbi Eliezer says. The Jewish people will change themselves. And because we will change ourselves and we will work from what's called from below to above, we'll do all the work in this time of exile. And when we don't see any miracles, we'll do all the work. Therefore, when the redemption does come, right, that does come, it'll be because of our work and we'll also be vessels to receive. Therefore, it'll, it'll be eternal. There won't be any, <clears throat> there won't be any exile afterwards. Future redemption. The world will be permanently good and healthy and loving 
and a life. For Rabbi Yeshua, Svirolo, he holds, lo bekesev tigalu, that we will not be redeemed, not through silver. It's a sentence in, in the, in the uh, prophets, who it is, Yeshaya and Isaiah. We won't be redeemed by money, kesev, but kesev also means love. The low, but what does it mean, love? Tshuva. Our, the future redemption is not going to come through our actions. It's not going to come through our deeds. There's no amount of deeds and repentance that we can do that will bring the future redemption. It's just too great. It's too great. It's like going and saying, you know, okay, putting up, a, you know, looking through the internet, how can I win? How can I earn 50 quadrillion dollars? Right, how to win quadrilla? That, that's ridiculous. There's nothing you can do unless you have tremendous luck that'll get you that much money. Right, you have to get elected to be a king or something. Who knows what? This is the same thing. The future redemption is going to be infinitely, infinitely greater than winning 50 quadrillion dollars, whatever it is. Infinitely greater. There's nothing that we can do that can possibly earn that re revelation. So says. Rabbi Yeshua. Rabbi Yeshua says we will not be redeemed, not with tshuva and not with good deeds. Tafilu ain't tshuva. What does it mean? That even if the Jews don't repent, even if the Jews don't return to God, they are the way they are now. Nevertheless, they'll be redeemed. Look, and therefore, spherically, they hold that in Nisan, atin in legal, that in Nisan we will be redeemed. Nisan is the month of miracles. God's going to do the whole business. In other words, Jews, good thing to repent, good thing to return to God, wonderful, but it's not necessary. God's going to take you out in any case. Sort of like a, a, a child what, in the family. You have, the, you have a family, and one child, he's the, you know, the drug addict, the, the, the crook, the liar, the, the criminal, but he's still part of the family. What can you do? The father is just waiting for him. <clears throat> Please, you know, do tshuva. And then they say, okay, you have a chance. Everyone can run away. Let's say they live in Poland. You can run away from the Nazis. You can take your whole family from the Nazis. What's he, he's going to take that kid also. Right? He'll take him also. He'll save him also. If he comes and says, dad, please. <clears throat> Same thing. God loves all the Jewish people. They're all his children. So he'll redeem them. He'll take them out. And when that happens, he'll, he said, you know what? We'll do it to the whole world also. The whole. Free gift. So says Rabbi Yoshua. I, how, if so, how can the future redemption be eternal? Like it says, Zachar, like it will be powerful. The Jewish people will be powerful. We just said that even the Jewish people don't even want the future redemption. It's going to happen. According to Rabbi Yoshua. How can it be? If so, how is it going to be permanent that the Jewish people will be in this tremendous love of God if they don't do anything, everything is going to happen by God Himself. He's going to do it. Because the Gilad Lassi level, because this future redemption and the revelation that's going to be, and it's going to be, who is Mimakom Nalem Od? It's from a very high source. Shagam Keshe Ish Tachila, that even if God does all the work, we said God is the man. If He gives seed first, Yolda Zachar, that we Jewish people will be inspired. With a tremendous love, even if we don't want it, we don't have any idea. We're Jews, nothing whatsoever. Nevertheless, it's going to happen. Like it says, it's a sentence in where another in Isaiah. Letzion Yomar and is in 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 the, the Jewish people will say ish ve'ishu ladbo. Masculine and masculine will be born. In other words, every single Jew will have this love of God, what's called masculine, powerful love of God. The gam kache ish mazir that even when ish, that God, he does everything, nolad ish, they'll be bo born in every Jew, powerful love, which is called masculine love of God. Okay, so here we go. Let's, let's just make a summary of this because we don't want to get to, it's talking about a subject which on one hand is very sort of, uh, how do you say, uh, the, the ethereal, you know, uh, mystical, not understandable, not practical subject. 
which is the future redemption. How is it going to happen? So the Rebbe is trying to make it the most practical and real and important subject there could possibly be. Nothing can be more important than this subject, that the whole world is actually going to change for the good. And it'll be clear what good is and what bad. It'll, it'll be clear. How is it going to happen? That's what the Rebbe is trying to get us interested in. Because it has to happen. The world can't continue this way. That's the whole idea of Judaism. That's what Abraham was promised. That's why Abraham made this religion, not just to get everybody into heaven and all the non-believers will burn in hell. <clears throat> to make everybody just connect to the creator. The creator is creating everybody. Just connect to him. How is this going to happen? Says there's two a different opinion. Rabbi Yoshua says it's going to happen. The whole thing is going to happen from above. God's going to do the whole business. And Rabbi Eliezer says, no, that God did the whole business. He did the whole thing. That was when the Jews were taken out of Egypt. But in the future, it's not going to be that way. It's going to be in the month of Tishrei. It means we're going to do the work. Therefore, we're going to be participants. We're going to be partners with God. And it's going to be an eternal redemption that there's never going to be another exile afterwards. No, what does Rabbi Yeshua say? I agree, it's going to be eternal, but not because of our work. It won't be. God will inspire in us somehow or other that every Jew in the world and from them, every human being in the world is going to have a tremendous love and appreciation and awe of the creator of the universe. It's, God, it's going to be a gift and God's going to give it. Therefore, it's going to happen in Nisa. <clears throat> We have, and that's going to be the law. The law is, says that it's going to be in the month of Nisan when God's going to do the whole thing. Says the Rebbe, one second. And okay, Allah Ofen Agula, it says, <clears throat> that we're, what do we say? Before, we're not just talking about the month. We're talking about how it's going to be. If it happens in the month of, if it, if it happens just by God doing the whole thing, then it's going to be in the month of Nisan. God's going to do the whole thing. Month of Nisan, that's the month that God does all the miracles. If it's going to happen because of our work, then it's going to happen in the month, the future redemption will be in the month of Tishrei, right? <clears throat> because it seems that it's unrelated what, what we care what month it happens, but everything is exact in Judaism. And the fact that the Jewish people, they do tshuva, they're redeemed. Therefore, it all fits together also with time, with the month of Tishrei, fits it. So therefore, and that's the law. The law is that in the future, the law is going to be like Rabbi Eliezer, like the Rambam says, that the Jewish people will only be redeemed if they do tshuva. Huh? So if so, the future redemption should be in the month of Tishrei, when tshuva. But the fact is, no. The future redemption, everyone agrees that it's going to be in the month of Nisan, like Rabbi Yeshua. So that wrecks up everything we just finished saying. We just finished saying that the month of Nisan, that shows that God does everything. And the month of Tishrei shows that we do everything, and therefore it's going to be an eternal redemption. And Rabbi Yeshua has got to really twist himself to figure out how it's going to be eternal, because God's going to do everything. It's Nisan. So the law is, no, it's going to be like Rabbi Eliezer says, that the Jewish people have to do tshuva. The Jewish people have to return to God. But also the law is, when is it going to happen? In the month of Nisan, that God's going to do everything. How does that figure out? That doesn't make sense. The Rabbi says, that, that's the whole point. Listen to this. Yesh Lomer, we can say, the explanation is like this. I'll be much like what it says in the Tanya. Shekal giluim that all of the re revelations, shalati lavo, that are going to be in the future, this is chapter 37. All the revelations that are going to be 36, 37, all the revelations that are going to be in the future. <clears throat> what happened? What happened? Oh, in the future, Taluyim, they all depend on Maseno Vavaratenu. Everything depends on our work. Meshach Zaman Galat in the time of the exile. The Indian said that this is according to all opinions. It seems that according to every opinion, that we have to do the work. 
If so, that the redemption should come in Tishrei. That's what we just explained. That's the month where we have to do all the work. Ella, but according to Rabbi Yeshua, that says the redemption is going to be <clears throat> in by God alone, and it's going to be in Nisan. Masenu. <clears throat> that which by means of our work, our deeds and our work in the time of exile, will be drawn down these revelations from the future, who it will come, not on their own. It's not that we really force God to do anything. But the deeds that we do now, in the time of exile, Yesh Koach, we have the power, the Gilui of the revelation from above, which we're going to learn in the future. In other words, in the time that there was the Holy Temple, in the time that the Jewish people had a Jewish identity and they did good deeds, it was wonderful, but it wasn't any amazing accomplishment. The big accomplishment of the Jews is when they do Torah, when they do the commandments, in this time of exile, when it's so obvious that God does not exist, when it's so just clear that there's no benefit to being a Jew whatsoever. There's no reward, there's no punishment, there's no good, there's no bad. The world is just dark as the darkness there can possibly be to the point where people say that that's not dark, that's light, that's what it's supposed to be. Egotism is reality. You do what you want, you say what you want, you think what you want. <clears throat> Life is bad. Limitations are bad. Laws are bad. No control. That's Everybody says that's what's good. In this situation, for a Jew to do commandments, this is worth all the miracles that God did going out of Egypt. <clears throat> we have the power by one good deed. That was the whole story of Purim. By one good deed to stand against nature, the nature of our inside and outside. That has the power of miracles. According to this Yesh Labir, we can explain now these two <clears throat> laws we said before. On one hand, it says that the Jewish people will not be redeemed unless they return to God. But at the same time, when will they be redeemed? In the month that God does everything. Nisan. Kizesh, Israel, that which the Jewish people, they do tshuva in the end of their exile. Umiyad and Nigalim, and immediately they are redeemed and that they stop all the problems in the world who because Shabbasias Tshuva that when Jewish people turn return to the creator it's such an impossible an amazing miraculous thing Besov Galutan at the end of their exile Yesh Koach this has the power the Gilu Milamaila it's a miracle from above and this is the whole idea of Nisan It'll be combined. Our deeds will be miraculous, but they'll be on our own. We'll be defying <clears throat> the entire creation in order to connect to the creator. And this is a thing which is not going to be written in the newspapers, and it's not a spectacular thing. You don't get prizes or, or World Cups or something like that for doing it. This is called real victory. This is real heroism. True defiance of of uh, how do you say exile true <clears throat> self-sacrifice for the creator defying the creation and connecting to the creator in order to fix it even one little good deed that a Jew does it has repercussions that are like going out of Egypt they have the power of going out of Egypt so that's what it's coming and telling you, that on one end, it all depends on us. But on the other end, the little bit that we do has the power of Nisan, re revelations from above. <clears throat> okay, we're going to continue this tomorrow. And the Rebbe has, is going to explain this idea of our deeds in the time of exile and their importance and give us encouragement to be a little bit crazy and defy bad for the sake of good. God willing, tomorrow. Now we'll learn the Sicha of the Rebbe. We're finishing the Sicha that we started yesterday. <clears throat>